So you're off on holiday this summer and you can't wait. But what about being comfortable on the plane and looking a little bit stylish too? A challenge? Not for us fabulous ladies. Stay tuned to find out what not to wear on a plane and what to wear instead. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, the channel for ladies over 50 who want to look and feel fabulous. And a special warm welcome if you're new here. I'm really excited about this ladies. I'm sharing nine tips on what not to wear on a plane and what to consider wearing instead to make your journey as comfortable as possible whilst looking a touch stylish at the same time. And I've got two big bonus hacks at the end of this video which you'll want to stay for as well. Now, I'm a big traveller. A few years ago, just before COVID, I used to travel every two weeks, mainly in the Middle East and in North Africa. So I got packing and how to fly comfortably down to a fine art. I've also got a really good friend who's got a lot of experience in the airline industry and she's been sharing a few really good tips for me as well. So get comfortable, grab yourself a coffee like this one. And just as a quick aside, this Heyman coffee is the best coffee I've ever tasted. Or whatever your beverage of choice is. And let's chat together about flying and how best to have a really good experience while looking good at the same time. The key thing when you're flying, apart from reaching your destination of course, is to feel comfortable, to be able to move easily and to relax on the plane, especially if it's a longer flight. And you may want to look a little stylish too, not a baggy mess. So it's a sort of balancing act, isn't it? But let's kick off with my first tip. Don't wear clothes that are too short or too long. So let's start with longer clothes that I wouldn't recommend. Why? Well, a maxi dress or a skirt seems like a really comfortable option, doesn't it? But just think about all the body fluids that it could drape through when you're on the plane and the, in the toilets on the plane in particular. It's not a nice thought, I know, but you really don't want to be dragging these fluids around on the bottom of your beautiful dress all day. And not only this, but long clothes obviously pick up the dirt a lot more and airports can be really dirty places. Long duster cardigans, which I do love, I wouldn't wear on a plane either, mainly because obviously they, they're long and they could drag in anything, but also they can get caught up in something thing such as your seat and of course anything long and flowing is a bit of a hazard it could trip you up or even worse somebody else equally short items of clothing such as really short shorts and shortish skirts can also be really tricky it's always a temptation isn't it to wear something quite light that's going to be suitable for your destination when you land but actually I find that short shorts and skirts tend to ride up quite a lot at least a couple of inches and get really embarrassing on the flight and of course they're just at the perfect head height of all the people that you're going to be walking really close to when you walk around on the plane. They could get a real eyeful of the top of your leg or worse so that kind of puts me off wearing really short clothes on a plane. And of course just an additional little practical issue is you're going to get cold. Shorts are going to expose tons of cold leg. So what to wear instead? Well, I usually go for loosish trousers. They're usually printed or soft materials, and of course it depends where I'm flying to, um, but often I wear cotton ones as well, for a couple of main reasons. Prints don't show marks or stains like from food or drink, which is often a potential problem on a plane. So I tend to not wear plain colours so that I can avoid arriving at my destination with a huge stain down my front. Not a good look. And cotton trousers can be a good option too because they're not itchy. There is nothing worse than being itchy all over, all during the whole flight um, and wriggling around in your seat like that. Which leads me on to my second tip. Don't wear clothes that crease. If you don't want to arrive looking like a wrinkled sack, I would steer clear of fabrics that really crease, such as linen in particular. Sitting for a long time on a plane doesn't really do any fabric any favours, but try to limit the possibility of looking too much of a mess. So let me move on to my tip number three. Number three is don't wear tight clothes. It's important not to wear tight clothes. It's not just because obviously it's less easy to relax in tight clothes, but actually in the air, our bodies expand. So the clothes become tighter and tighter and more restricting. So it's almost a medical issue. And also when you're sitting on the plane, everything in your front kind of bunches up, doesn't it? So we want to minimize this look by wearing something slightly looser. As a solution, a great option is to layer, layer and layer. 
There are so many advantages to layering. Obviously, the temperatures vary a lot on and off the plane when you get to your destination and so on. And it's so easy just to put layers on or take them off. A t-shirt is a great choice as a basic foundation layer. You can add layers on top of that, of course, and t-shirts are often cotton, so they're breathable and they're fairly soft next to the skin as well. You add more layers as necessary, of course, such as an open cardigan. Now, I do like this kind of thing which you can open with buttons that's not perhaps a fleece because it's much easier to get out of if you need to. And I always carry a cosy scarf as well, something like this. It's really lovely to snuggle up into. And also, if you want to have a nap on the plane, it's perfect for just draping over. Tip number four is don't wear white jeans or white trousers. This is fairly obvious, of course, because white shows marks much more. No matter how careful you are, it's really difficult to avoid in an airport flight situation marks or scuffs on the trousers. And they're really difficult to get out. So I would steer clear of white jeans or white trousers. And that's another reason why I tend to go for printed trousers as well. Also, a quick word about jeans. They're great if they've got lots of give. Um, but if they hover, if they're hard denim or if they're tight, they can be a bit restrictive and that's not very good for a long flight. But my fifth tip is don't wear high heels or flip flops. Wearing high heels such as these is an absolute no-no from a security point of view, first of all, uh, and also for comfort because feet tend to swell on the plane. And God forbid if something terrible happens, you wouldn't be allowed to wear your high heels out on the evacuation slide because it may pierce it. So it's better to wear flat shoes such as sneakers um, or ballerinas such as this or some other flat shoes. Although socks are also recommended and that wouldn't be a very good look with ballerinas. Another type of shoe that you shouldn't wear on a plane is flip-flops. I know it's tempting because obviously you want to be beach ready as soon as you get to the destination, but they're really a very bad idea. Try to wear shoes uh, such as sneakers or ballerinas with a back to them. Slides and flip-flops will make it really difficult for you to run if you have to and certainly to walk along all those corridors in the airport and in my experience closed shoes are much better on the plane anyway because it can get really chilly around the feet and blue toes and blue feet are not really a very good look also think about shoes that can be easily taken off especially at airport security and I'm coming to a little story about that in a minute my sixth thing not to do is don't wear clothes or jewelry with a metal content no one likes to beep when you go through the airport security. I find myself holding my breath, don't you? So try to avoid wearing clothes with metallic threads through them. And remember to take off any jewellery before you get to the security area. I always take off jewellery or a watch before I actually get to that point. Just slip anything like that into your bag so that you're ready. Number seven, don't wear complicated items that are difficult to take off. On a similar note, don't wear things that take ages to take off. Nothing worse than having to take your shoes off when there's queues of people behind you, all rushing, rushing, and you've got to fiddle with laces and all sorts of things on your shoes. It actually happened to me at Gatwick Airport, and I honestly thought I was going to get run over. The tide of people trying to overcome me was unbelievable. Belts can be complicated as well, so go for ease of release, if you know what I mean. Number Eight, don't carry a small handbag. I kind of never do anyway. I always take a large tote bag with me on the plane to fit as much stuff in it as I can. This is the one I'm using this summer from Amazon. It's a good size. It's big enough to just throw everything in, but it's not too big. So I can actually wear it when I'm on holiday as well, take it to the pool, take it out for an evening meal. And it's got lots of zippable compartments here, um, which you can just shove everything, your passport, your tissues, your phone and everything without having to, to worry about losing it. Tip number nine on what not to wear is no hat. Now, I've recently made this cardinal error. I love a hat, and for me, the bigger the better. I've taken my beautiful big sun hat, actually this one, that I adore wearing out in a sunny destination, um, but it's an absolute pain in the you-know-what to lug about the airport all the time. And the number of times that I've been reaching for something and I've just had to say to my husband, do you know what, can you just hold that for a minute? It's a total nightmare. So, if you love hats like I do, I've found the solution. Find one that's foldable. 
It's a basic thing, but I didn't think about it before. So this is the one I'm taking on my next holiday. It's large, it's floppy, it's foldable, and it comes in so many other colours as well, such as this beautiful pink one. They're all made of straw, by the way, cheap from Amazon. Um, this one as well, a straw colour with a lovely ribbon, and the yellow one, which is really vibrant and summery, and tons more. And for you lucky ladies in the US, you have, guess what? 39 different variations and colours to choose from. I can also see this one, for example, being perfect for a summer wedding guest outfit as well. By the way, just before I get on to the two bonus hacks that I know you've been waiting for, if you really want to kickstart your quest to look and feel fabulous after 50, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It brings you weekly inspiration and fresh ideas and subscribing really helps me to continue the channel. So are you ready for the extra bonus hacks? Number one, think about your destination. Obviously you're going to be thinking about it, right? I mean, you can't wait to get there, but I mean, think about it strategically. Put any items that you're going to need immediately you land in your bag, your tote bag, for example, or in your carry-on. For hot destinations, I always pop in a pair of flip-flops, a little cami, a pair of shorts and some sunglasses so that I can go immediately to the, the loos in the airport when I arrive and so that I don't feel overcoated when I land at 100 degrees. Also, if your luggage is delayed, it means that you'll have something to wear while you're waiting for your beautiful sundresses to arrive. The second bonus hack is hydrate your face. Of course, everybody goes on about drinking water to hydrate yourself on the flight, which is perfectly right, of course. But what about your face? Flying can really wreak havoc on your facial skin, all that low humidity and dry cabin. So what to do? I advise a deeply moisturising, preferably hyaluronic serum or oil, not just a moisturising cream, which you apply before you get onto the flight and, if you can, during the flight as well. Hyaluronic acid is actually a sugar molecule which is found naturally in the skin. It binds to water and sucks it into the skin, creating juicy plumpness. And let's face it, ladies, we all want juicy plumpness. For a very reasonably priced little bundle of intense moisture, you could try this one. This is a L'Oreal bundle. It contains the anti-wrinkle hyaluronic acid serum. It's got a day cream as well and a refreshing micellar water too. And in America, actually, you can buy them singly. So just get the hyaluronic acid serum. And then, of course, limit your makeup, if you choose to wear it, to something light, such as a concealer, a tinted lip balm and some mascara to give the eyes some definition. And I always use a touch of the fabulous by Terry brightening CC palette just look at that fabulous it really lifts and brightens the face after a flight easy to apply whack it on with some brushes and you look refreshed and brightened and by the way don't forget to share with us in our little community in the comments box underneath any tips or hints that you've found when you've been traveling on a plane what what to wear or what not to wear all the links to the items that I've mentioned are listed in the video description if you scroll down underneath the video for you to browse or buy. And of course, I really hope that you've liked this video, ladies, and good luck on your travels on a plane. Now you know not what not to wear, can't say it, and what to wear instead so that you'll look fabulous as well as feeling fabulous. If you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you really soon. Have an amazing day. Lots of love. Bye.